Luke chapter 8, we'll begin reading verse 26. The Bible says, And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils a long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice says, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he brake the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do thank you for being a good God. God, we're thankful that all powers are subject unto thee because you have all power. And Lord, it didn't matter how many demons this man was possessed with, they were no match for thee. Just like all the imps of hell was no match for thee, when you was on Calvary, they couldn't kill you. You gave up the ghost. God, you had power to lay down your life and take it up again. And we bless your holy name. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless those that are working with the children on the other side of the building. I pray you'd bless those working with the teens. I pray for those young people, Lord. Uh, we know the devil would like nothing better than to wreck their lives. So I pray that you'd put the Word of God in them. Uh, and then, God, you would overshadow them and protect them. Uh, and, God, I pray that uh, 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 as they are learning about Jesus, Jesus would impact their life uh, for all eternity. Lord, we do pray that you would uh, help us now from the Word of God, help us, Lord, to be set on fire for God, that we might make a difference uh, in this day we live in. God, you know the need of every heart here tonight. I pray for those that may be struggling, you would strengthen them. Those that may be uh, uh, ill in body, that you would heal them. I pray, Lord, for those that uh, are, are seeking, that they would find. I pray for those that, Lord, are longing for that abundant life, that, God, it would befall upon them. And then, Father, we do pray, if there be any amongst us uh, throughout the entire building, unsaved, maybe one of those children or one of those teens, uh, just like we've seen Olivia trust Christ, uh, God, I pray if there's be anybody unsaved tonight in the building that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, Father, have your will and way. Speak to hearts. Uh, and get glory to yourself and make certain all attention and all glory goes to Jesus. And we'll thank you for it. For it's in his wonderful name we ask these things. Uh, Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, I want to uh, just uh, look at a few things about this fellow before we get to the uh, thought. The first thing I want you to notice is this man's bondage to sin. Uh, if you would look again at verse 27, the Bible says, uh, And when he went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time, uh, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. Uh, this man uh, was so controlled by not only the devil, he was controlled by sin. Uh, 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 he had uh, uh, no cognizance of what uh, uh, he should do. He was controlled by sin. Sin held him captive. Sin had him bound. Uh, uh, here he's running around uh, with no clothes on, uh, running around in the tomb. Sin had made him an outcast in society. Uh, uh, he no longer dwelt where other people dwelt. Uh, uh, sin had made him a prisoner. Uh, uh, he's walking around with the dead because he's dead in trespasses in sin. Uh, we find he's a bondage to sin. Uh, uh, can I say, I want you to notice his bondage to self. Look in verse 28. Uh, uh, the Bible says, when he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down uh, uh, before him and said with a loud voice, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Most high, I beseech thee, uh, 
torment me not. Uh, he's bound to self. Uh, he's already been up on the hillside and walked just in the verses prior to this you find where Jesus uh, 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 calms the wind and the waves uh, and the waters. Uh, uh, when he thought he'd see another shipwreck, uh, he's seen something different. There was one stood out on the bow of the ship and calmed the storm. Uh, he knows who Jesus is. Uh, he ought to say, this man can help me. This man can change my life. Uh, but no, he doesn't want Jesus to mess with him and torment him he's a bound to sell it amazes me a lot of folks like singing they don't mind testimonies they just don't want to hear any preaching because it affects where they are and who they are and they don't like to feel uncomfortable about themselves he's in bondage to sin he's in bondage to self he thinks he knows what's best for his life uh, what a choice let's go hang out in the graveyard all day mm -mm. Uh, can I help you with something? Sin will take you a lot farther than you ever thought you'd go. You'll end up places you never thought you'd end up in. You end up in circumstances and, and things that you never dreamed of. Uh, and we find this man is about as low as you can get, and yet he doesn't want Jesus to help him. Hmm? Notice something else. He is in bondage to Satan. Look in verse uh, 29, if you will. Verse 29 says, for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of him, for oftentimes it had caught him, was kept bound with chains and fetters, and he broke the bands, was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, and said, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. Can I say this man was possessed? You've heard of people have multiple personalities? Uh, a lot of them are possessed. This, this uh, uh, fellow didn't just have one demon possessing him. He had many many demons huh? I think I've met this fellow a time or two but that's a whole other story All right, huh? Uh, but I, I, I'm telling you this, this fellow is in bondage to Satan the Bible says that oftentimes the spirit of, of, of this devil would catch him and, and throw him down he'd hurt himself and cut himself and can I say that's always a mark of the devil the devil will always cause people to hurt themselves and inflict punishment on themselves hmm all, all these teenagers caught up in a lot of this stuff going on today and they're cutting themselves. That's demonism. Sure. They've got a devil in them and they need to be delivered. And can I say only the blood of Jesus Christ can deliver them from that unclean spirit. He's in bondage to this devil. Uh, a, a lot of these things that are, are geared toward young people today are geared to open their minds and their hearts to demon possession. Uh, uh, whether it's uh, uh, some of the video games they're involved with, some of the activities they're involved with, uh, 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 some of these new things that they're out there uh, 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 that they get involved with, uh, 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 some of this uh, uh, vaping and stuff leads them to stronger stuff and stronger stuff which opens their minds to allowing the devil to invade their lives. Lives. Uh, yes, can I say a lot of the religions, a lot of the uh, uh, games they play, a lot of the things that are out there are have dark undertones, and it's all geared to them opening their lives to the devil. It's a it's a sorry thing. It amazes me. I, I remember years ago when those uh, Harry Potter books come out. I warned parents: don't let your children. It's a poison. Uh, uh, one child after reading it said uh, uh, he didn't want anything to do with Jesus. Jesus was stupid. Harry Potter was cool. Hmm? You start letting your kids read this garbage. And by the way, the woman who wrote them is an atheist. And you're opening their minds to things that will lead them down a path that you may never, ever get to recover them from. Yes, hmm? uh, I've heard people say, well, I'll wait till they get grown and let them choose about religion. That's crazy. Uh, when they're an infant, do you let them play in the street? Hmm? <laughs> If you wait till they're grown before you introduce them to the things of God, chances are they'll never accept God. Amen. It's a dangerous, dangerous thing. That's why it's so important that those children are back there learning about Jesus tonight. We saw evidence of it this morning. Amen. We see that this man's in bondage to Satan. But notice this man's bondage gets shattered. Look at verse 35. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed. Aren't you glad they got departed? Yeah, amen. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. Now look at the crowd. You'd think they'd be excited. And they were afraid. Huh? They were afraid to see this fellow got right. Can I say some of your bar drinking buddies didn't like it when you got right either? 
kind of scared them to death. Some of that crowd you used to run around with, they didn't like it when you got right either. Huh? Some of your family don't like it that you're sitting in church tonight, not on a bar stool, uh, 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 because uh, 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 they see what Jesus can do in a life of somebody. Huh? Amen. Now I don't have time to get into those swine and everything, but I'll just say this, a demon needs to have a body. When those demons were crying for, for the Lord not to send them to the deep, they were crying not to have to go to the abyss. The abyss is the prison house where uh, uh, we find over there uh, 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 when they said that those uh, 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 demons that uh, had relations with uh, earthly women were chained and, and reserved unto judgment. They're in the abyss. Uh, they can't get out of the abyss. They're chained there until uh, uh, the uh, uh, great white throne judgment when they'll be cast in the lake of fire. What this crowd was doing, uh, they were bidding Jesus not to let them go to the deep, to the abyss, uh, uh, because as long as they they are not there. They can also influence others. Uh, so they jumped in them swine. The swine had enough sense to go drown themselves, huh? But that loosed them demons to go find some other body to possess. But here we find this guy's bondage gets shattered when he meets Jesus. Aren't you glad all your bondage got broken when you met Jesus? Huh? You're no longer bound by sin. You're no longer bound by self. You're no longer bound by Satan. Hallelujah. You got a new master. Isn't that a blessing? Uh, aren't you glad when Jesus moved in, the devil had to move out? Uh, what a blessing to be saved by the good grace of God. What I'd like to focus on is found there in, in verse 35. It says, And when they were come out to see what was done, and came to Jesus, they found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus. And I want to preach on at the feet of Jesus. Amen. The Bible has a lot to say about folks and their attitudes and what goes on at the feet of Jesus. Can I say the best place you can ever get is to the feet of Jesus? Yes. You ever get there, you get some help, hallelujah. Huh? There's just something about it at his feet. Uh, I've heard folks say and I've heard songs sing about going and putting your arms around his neck. And everything. When you see the one that is altogether lovely, uh, uh, when you see those hair that is white as wool and those eyes as flame as fire, that countenance as brass, uh, you see him in his glory. You're going to do like Peter, James, and John did. Uh, you're going to do like Paul did. Uh, uh, you're going to do like everyone that's seen the glorified Christ. Uh, you're going to fall at his feet uh, and reverence him uh, and give him the glory, do his name. Uh, there's just something about getting to his feet. Uh, hallelujah that we uh, are uh, act, get access and are privileged to be able to crawl to the feet of Jesus and get some help. Uh, I don't care what you didn't eat tonight. You can find help at the feet of Jesus. Can I say first of all there's pardon at the feet of Jesus. We find this right here. This fellow got forgiven of his sins. Uh, his life was changed, uh, and you find him at the feet of Jesus. Uh, I want to tell you something. Uh, 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 any old sinner, uh, any old uh, uh, folks possessed by something, uh, if we can just get them to the feet of Jesus, uh, Jesus can save them and change them. Like that song Brother James sang this morning. Uh, uh, you say, how do you know this fellow's changed? Uh, he's no longer running around naked being a violent man. Uh, he's clothed and in his right mind. Uh, hey, uh, years ago the cathedrals had a song about getting saved I just started living uh, isn't it amazing uh, uh, when you come to Jesus uh, you realize what life's all about uh, and you really just start living uh, you're in your right mind uh, you understand uh, hey before you get saved your understanding's darkened uh, you've been blinded to truth uh, but when you trust in Jesus uh, all new worlds open up to you uh, what a blessing to be in your right mind uh, there's greater evidence. Uh, he wants to follow Jesus. Uh, uh, they, uh, uh, you tell me uh, somebody got saved and they're no longer interested in the things of Jesus. I tell you, they didn't get saved. Uh, but when somebody gets saved, uh, they want to follow Jesus. Uh, then we find Jesus tells you, you can't go where I'm going. Uh, go back to your family. Uh, hey, uh, they were afraid that Jesus was there and sent him away. Uh, but when Jesus comes back, uh, this old Mad Madagadera used to be known as Legion. Uh, Hey, he's turned the whole town upside down. Uh, and they all come out uh, uh, to meet Jesus. And many of them get born again uh, because they seen what Jesus did in this old boy's life. Uh, isn't that what we're supposed to do? Yes, sir. Follow Jesus and then go where he tells us to go and just tell everybody what he did for us. Amen. When Jesus came back, there was a bunch of them wanting to see if Jesus could do it for them too. huh? Can I say there's pardon at the feet of Jesus? 
Can I say there's providence at the feet of Jesus? In Matthew 15, 30, the Bible says, And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. And he healed them. There's providence at his feet. These folks uh, uh, brought maimed and halt and blind and lame uh, and every manner of sickness and disease. Uh, they'd been to the doctors and the doctors couldn't help them. Uh, they'd take them down to the temple and the priest couldn't help them. Uh, here's a whole bunch of folks nobody could help, uh, uh, but they came uh, and brought them to Jesus. Uh, they said if there's anyone can help, uh, it's the provident one. Uh, hey, they brought them to him uh, and it didn't matter what they had. He opened up blinded eyes. Uh, he healed the lame. He healed of the sick. Uh, those that went in crippled went out whole. Uh, hey, it cannot be denied uh, when they got him Jesus uh, and he took over. Uh, lives changed. Uh, business picked up. Uh, hey, what a blessing to get to the feet of Jesus. Uh, you got him. There was providence there. Nobody else could do what Jesus did. Amen. When they got to him, oh, their lives changed. Uh, them sorry, no good chief priests tried everything they could to silence all that Jesus was doing. And he just kept healing folks. He kept just touching folks. Uh, he kept opening blinded eyes. They say, aren't you that blind guy that used to beg? Yeah, what happened to you? Jesus. Uh, uh, they, couldn't, they couldn't deny all that he'd done. That's why they tried him at night, by the way. They broke, broke the law doing that. That's why they paid off witnesses. That's why they threaten people from uh, uh, losing their seat in the temple if uh, uh, they testified about what Jesus had done for them. And the more they fought against it, the more fame he got. Uh, I like to tell a story. We know that Zacchaeus was a wicked man. He was a tax collector. No offense, Sister Billy. Zacchaeus was in the IRS. Uh, hey, how loose? She got a reprieve. She gets to go back to work. Boy, she's thrilled. Look at her girl's going. Yeah, if I had to work with that crowd too, I'd be sick too. Huh? Thank God she's got a job. But uh, uh, Zacchaeus had done a lot wrong. Back in those days, they really robbed people. Tax collectors did. Huh? He'd rob just about everybody he could. They started noticing blind men they used to never got any money for was coming in paying their taxes. They weren't blind no more. So what happened to you, Jesus? I got a job now because of Jesus. <laughs> I'm no longer begging. I'm here to pay some taxes. huh? Sick people that couldn't work, come in and start paying some taxes. Uh, 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 I thought you was crippled and couldn't work. What happened to you, Jesus? Huh? This woman came in one day, paid some taxes, said, I thought you spent all with many physicians uh, for 12 years. She said, I did. Uh, well, how you got any money? I met Jesus, uh, touched the hem of his garment, uh, and he made me whole, uh, and I'm able to go do some work now. Here's my taxes, Mr. Zacchaeus. Uh, and oh, everybody kept coming in, kept talking about Jesus. Uh, and then one day, here's a, a lot of commotion out in the street. Uh, he said, what's going on? He said, Jesus is coming down the street. Uh, and he climbed up that sycamore tree. Uh, it does, I got to get a hold of this. I got to see what this guy's all about. Uh, and Jesus gets right to the tree and stops and says, Zacchaeus, uh, you come down. Uh, I'm going to your house today. Uh, hey, it changed Zacchaeus' life. Uh, he got saved. Uh, Gave all the money that he stole back and then some. Uh, hey, what happened? Jesus happened. Uh, see, when folks' lives started getting changed and they started telling other folks, it just spread like wildfire. And even a sorry, no good tax collector got saved, huh? What a blessing. Providence happened at his feet. Plausibility happened at his feet. In Matthew 28, 9, you know the story. After Jesus resurrected, he had doubt in Thomas. He said, unless I stick my finger in the nail prints in his hands, I, I won't believe it. And then you know what happened when Jesus showed up. Uh, he said, blessed, because you've seen. He said, you've seen me. He said, but blessed are those that haven't seen, but just believe. huh? And you know the rest of the story of that too. We never find Thomas ever preaching a message 
We never find any history that Thomas ever pastored a church. We never find that Thomas ever evangelized anybody. We never find, because he's doubting Thomas. Hmm. If you're going to be used to God, you've got to have faith. Hmm. But you know the story. A lot of them still question what's going on. We saw him crucified. What is it? Well, there's plausibility when you get to his feet. And Matthew 28, 9 says, And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. You see, when they got to his feet, they worshiped him. All their doubts were gone. All their fears were gone. All that mattered is now they were in the presence of him. They didn't have to worry about how he resurrected. He was there. Hmm? Yes, sir. All plausibility has gone because they met the master at his feet. Can I say this? You'll find at the feet of Jesus there's pleading. Look at our chapter, chapter 8. Look down about verse 41. Well, look at verse 40. I like this. This is about that crowd, you know, that... Uh, the madman had witnessed to. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. Uh, they seen what he did in that old boy's life. They're saying they're waiting. Boy, I hope Jesus comes back today. You know what God's people ought to do? We ought to be telling everybody, but we ought to be sitting by the seashore just waiting for him to come back today. Anyway, that's a whole other message. Look at verse 41. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down where? At Jesus' feet, and besought him that we come to his house. And you know the story, he had a 12-year-old daughter at the brink of death. By the time they got there, she'd already died. And you know the rest of the story. Jesus said, she's not dead, she just sleeps. They all laughed at him. The mourners started laughing. He went in there and touched her by the hand, picked her up, come walking out with her. Hmm? Amen. He is the resurrection and the life. And in his, in, in his realm, she was just asleep. He just put life back in her, huh? But we see this man, this ruler of the synagogue, who knew the second he went and met with Jesus, his livelihood was gone. He's going to get fired. But yet he loved his daughter so much, and he realized the only hope I've got is in Jesus. And he's pleading at Jesus' feet to come to his house on behalf of his daughter, or for sake of his daughter. And I say... Oh, it's one thing when you got troubles to let a friend know. It's one thing when you got problems to go talk to somebody about it. But there's nobody can help you like Jesus. I highly recommend yes, getting sir. to his feet, Amen. pleading with him. You get Jesus on the scene, and I don't care how bad the situation may be, business will pick up when Jesus yes, walks sir. in the room. Are you listening? Can I say you find in the Word of God praise at Jesus' feet? We all know that song Miss Brittany sings. We love that song about that alabaster box. Yes, we find in John 12, 3, then, Mary took, uh, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. And oh, how she was praising Jesus for what great things he'd done in her life. And her praise was experienced by everybody in the room. That song says, even though she spoke no words, they all knew. Uh, uh, they say that that pound of spikener would have cost the average person a year's wages. Now, how long did she have to save to get it? That was used for burial purposes. How long did she... Maybe it was an heirloom that was passed down to her. I don't know. But I dare say it was probably the most precious thing outside of life that she had in her possession. But Jesus had meant so much to her, she just used it on him. Hmm? Amen. What a blessing. And what a testimony. Yes, sir. And what a tribute of worship and praise that she showed that day. It was so significant. We're talking about it over 2,000 years later. Yes, hmm? You find it, where did it happen? At his feet. Hmm? Then I thought about this. There's preparation at the feet of Jesus. Let's flip over a page to Luke chapter 10. Maybe two pages. Look at verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. 
Now, my dear friends, we know the story. Mary and Martha are sisters. We know they had a brother named Lazarus. We know that Lazarus got sick. They said, let the master know. The master can touch him. We've already talked about it. Anybody got to Jesus, he touched them. They was made whole. These folks knew that Jesus could heal Lazarus. And you know, this is Sister Brittany night. She sings this song too. You know that Jesus got word and he didn't rush over to Lazarus' house. By the time he gets there, it's been four days. They've been mourning Lazarus for three days. He's passed away. You know the story. Can I say back then, people were not declared legally dead till they'd been dead three days. That way, they'd had a situation where people were in a coma. They said they're dead, and people woke up out of the coma. Three days, they're legally dead. Three days. That's why he waited, by the way. So there could be no argument that Lazarus was just sleeping. That Lazarus was just in a coma. There's no argument. That's why he waited. That's why he said that he, it was for the glory of God. And you know that when they get there, Martha approaches him and says, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And she did it to indict Jesus. Where you been? We needed you. And then, you know, Mary comes out and says the same words, but she's got a different tone. She's broken. She's weeping. Lord, we know if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And you know, in John eleven thirty five, 35, the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. He saw their weeping. He got broken hearted and showed compassion. He wept too. No, and he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. But still, he's so tore up because they're all tore up. And he weeps. And then they get, he said, take me to the, where you've laid him. They get down there to where the tomb is. There's a, t a stone over the tomb. And you know, uh, 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 there, uh, many bodies were buried in a tomb in, in a lot of instances. Uh, folks uh, weren't like Joseph of Arimathea could afford their own uh, separate sepulcher. And there might have been many bodies in that tomb. Uh, uh, he said, where have you laid him? And they got there, there's a stone over there. Jesus said, roll the stone over. Jesus didn't put it there. Jesus wasn't taking it away. There are some things that we put in our life that Jesus can't do a work until we get them out of our life. That'll help some of you. Uh, he's not going to remove something that you deliberately put there. Mm. But when you're willing to move that out of the way, he can go to work and do things that you could never dream could get done. Are you listening? You just got to get the obstacles out of the way. But we find that Jesus cries with a loud voice, Lazarus come forth. Uh, he, 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 pre he, he cried with a loud voice, woke the dead. Are you listening? Say, preacher, why you preach so loud? I'm trying to wake dead sinners. That's why, huh? That might help some of you, huh? I'm just following Jesus, huh? And you know, the Bible says that he came forth bound in grave clothes. Now, you can believe what you want to. There are people say, I can see Lazarus just scooting on. No, he's bound hand and foot. He couldn't scoot. He came forth out of the power of God. Yeah. Huh? What a picture of salvation, huh? Yeah. Hey, I was dead in trespassing and sins. I couldn't get undead. It took the power of God to raise me from my deadness. Uh, he come out of there. Jesus said, loose him, let him go. Again, Jesus didn't bind him all up. Jesus wasn't going to unbind him. Are you listening? You know the story. And then when they come to Mary's and Martha's house to have a feast, uh, uh, here they are, Martha's serving. She's all tore up. She's serving. Jesus come to her house. All the disciples are coming. She's wanting to put a meal on. She's serving. Uh, she's all tore up. She's busy. She's cumbered about with much care, the Bible says. Mm. And I can see her. She's just working her fingers to the bone. Uh, remember that song? Work your fingers to the bone. What do you get? Bony fingers. she got bony fingers. Lisa remembered the song. I sent her singing. Yeah, her mom used to sing it. Her mom and I must have grew up same time, huh? Anyway, she's just working, huh? Then all of a sudden she gets to look around. Well, where's Mary? Now she's mad. You know, here I'm working myself to death trying to get all this stuff done. Where's Mary? Oh, she's in there sitting at the feet of Jesus. She gets mad, upset. Then she gets real bossy. She goes, tell Jesus, tell Mary to get up and come help me. Hmm? Hmm. Martha's a good Baptist lady. Just helping you. But notice what Jesus said when Martha tries to tell Jesus what to do. Look at verse 41. 
And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. And Jesus looks at her and says, Martha, Martha, you don't have a clue, dear. He said, you're all troubled about many things. He said, there's one thing that's needful, and Mary's chosen that thing, and it's not going to be taken away from her. Well, what's the one thing that Mary's doing? Well, look again, verse number 39. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Jesus said, Martha, you're all interested in a meal and serving people and cleaning up the house and all these things, which are good things. But you're missing the mark. Mary's chosen that one good thing. The thing that's going to help her life more than anything else. She's at my feet and she's listening to my word. There's preparation being done here. At Jesus' feet, you can hear what Jesus has to say. You know why some people don't get it? Because they're not at his feet. When we come to the house of God, there's some people sitting on the edge of their seat. What they're doing, they're at Jesus' feet. They want to hear what the Word has to say. They want something that's going to prepare them for the, uh, uh, the next mile of the way, for the next bend in the road, for the next storm that's starting to brew. Uh, they need some help today, but they realize uh, uh, tomorrow's coming too, and they need help for tomorrow. Uh, so I'm just going to sit at Jesus' feet. Uh, I'm going to listen to what He has to say. Whatever He says, I'm going to do it. Uh, some of you get so tore up doing a bunch of stuff, which isn't bad stuff, but it's hindering you from being at Jesus' feet. And that's the good part. That's the good way. That's what's important, being at his feet, hearing what he has to say because it'll prepare you for whatever comes into your life. There's some people that get blindsided and have no direction which way to turn because they haven't sown what Jesus had to say in their heart. And their life gets just wrecked because they had no foundation in their life. He told her, he says, one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part. Of all the things that a Christian needs to do, there's one thing needful. That's sit at his feet and hear what he has to say. You ought to do it every day of your life. You ought to find some quiet time where you can just get this word of God and get near Jesus and talk to him and say, all right, Lord, show me something from your word that's going to help me today. Amen. That's the good part. That's what you need. That'll help you. And then when trouble comes... Oh, it may still blindside you, but it's not going to wreck your foundation because what you have is anchored in Jesus. It'll help you, friend. Amen. You see, at Jesus' feet, nothing else really matters because you're at Jesus' feet. Yeah. And when you're at His feet, it's, it's safe. It's secure. You find strength that you never knew you had. You find encouragement. You find love and compassion. You find everything that your soul really desires at his feet. So many people are looking for the wrong thing. They're like old, old Elijah. They're looking for the, the earthquake and the thunder and all that. But if they just get at his feet and hear that still small voice, they'll get something down in the gable end of their soul that will help them no matter what comes. So tonight, I'm just encouraging you, just get at his feet. You know somebody in trouble, just get them to his feet. You know somebody needs to be saved, just get them to his feet. Just get them to Jesus, and that'll get the job done. Amen. Just get them to him. At his feet, everything changes. No matter what shape your life's in today, if you can just get to his feet, it'd be all right. Hmm? No matter what your tomorrows bring, if you can just get to his feet, it'd be all right. Hmm? It'd be a great day in your life, and you realize you don't need to get to his head. You don't need to see his eyes. You don't even need to hear his voice. Just get to his feet. When you get to his feet, you'll hear his voice. You'll feel his hand. You'll have his peace. It all comes when you humble yourself and let him raise you up. I highly recommend camping out as much as you can at Jesus' feet. Brother Ray, you come. Let's get a song of invitation. Maybe it's been a while since you've really been at his feet. Maybe it's been a while since you just came before him and said, Lord, it's me again. I sure do long for your help and your instruction.
Maybe you know somebody that's not saved. You ought to come get in this altar and say, Lord, how can I get them to your feet? Maybe you know somebody that's really going through it. Maybe you ought to come and intercede on their behalf, get to Jesus' feet and say, Lord, Jarius did. He pleaded on behalf of his daughter. Lord, you know somebody's really going through it. Lord, could you help them? Could you do something for them? Maybe you just want to come and tell them you love him. Huh? Maybe you want to pour out some praise on him. Just come and tell him thank you. Tell him you love him. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. There's nothing like being at his feet. Let's all stand. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. Well, oh, I'm glad there's help at your feet. Lord, you said you're nigh them of a broken heart and save us such of a contrite spirit. You told us if we'll humble ourselves before God that, Lord, you'd lift us up. God, there's nothing to lift our hearts or our heads any more than words of encouragement we find at your feet. But Father, you know the need of everyone here tonight. You know our todays. You even know our tomorrows. Somebody might need some help tonight. Lord, somebody may face something tomorrow. So help them to spend time at Jesus' feet to get all that they need for the, the days to come. I pray, Lord, for those that we can get to, to your feet that are lost, that God, we might see them saved. Lord, it may be somebody really uh, uh, needs our attention to pray and intercede. You told us to pray one for another. So, Father, I pray you'd speak in this invitation, deal with hearts, and I pray, folks, uh, be sensitive and mind the Lord. God, we'll thank you for what you do, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.